Hi, this is Jack Downs. I'm here to tell you about some of the functions and controls in our digital audio recorders, the Zooms, or the Zoom H2Ns. This is what the Zooms look like. I'll show you a closer up view in just a moment. These are our newer Zoom style. Um, we should have five of these kits in the cage. Occasionally you might hear about an older silver Zoom type. Very functional, works a little differently. Um, we'll only use those if we have some problems with uh, broken down equipment and need to supplement the kits that we have. But for now, all these Zooms should be these newer black style. Okay, on to the description in the, of the screen and so on. Okay, so this is the Zoom up close. Um, how do you turn it on? The on switch is actually the hold button. See right here, I'm going to push it down. And when I do, the screen comes on a little closer. This is what the front screen of the Zoom looks like. You can see that I'm already in a standby mode. As I'm speaking, watch those level buttons, um, go, those level sliders going up. That's showing you how much recording I'm getting. And you also see that the, the backlight went off, uh, as it does. Now, um, it's hard to see without the backlight on the screen, but if you're using it yourself, um, you would still be able to see those levels very easily. And you can make the backlight go back on when you want to. Um, but for now, let's just continue talking about the features and what you find around on different controls. On the side, again, where the hold button is, is the mic gain. Very important. Um, this controls the amount of sound that's getting into the mic. Um, I would suggest you probably put it at about 7, and then try it and see what it sounds like. Um, record briefly, play back, and listen for any either if the volume seems really low or if there's distortion. If there's the, the biggest concern is if your levels are too high and they start peaking, you're going to get what we call clipping or distortion, which is just too much sound for the mic to handle, in which case you want to turn your gain down. What else is here is a play button. It's actually a play toggle. It works kind of like an enter button too. When you just push that button straight in, it becomes an enter button or it would allow you to play the most recent things you've recorded. Um, a menu button, which allows you to move through the menus. Um, and let's see, on the back, the only thing on the back, is this whole back panel is where the batteries are. So you have to slide the back panel off to get to the batteries. And you had to really push hard, push down, in and down on the back panel to make it come off. You shouldn't have to worry about this. Batteries last a very long time in these. If someone left it on, um, that could be a problem. There are extra batteries in your kit. Okay, on this side is where our USB goes in. Let me get a little closer. USB goes in. Um, we had your headphone uh, input, which, uh, which is important. Um, volume plus and minus, that means the volume of the speakers, like when you're listening to something. And line in if we used an external mic, which you probably won't be using for this for us. Uh, we're back to the front again, but I'm going to tip it down. These are your mic selectors and your mic selector light. Very important. So I would suggest you, there's generally two mic choices you're going to be using in this class. You can play with the others. There's nothing wrong with trying them out, seeing how they sound, and if you like them, go ahead and use them. The XY records, and in fact, it shows you a pattern there. So it's just recording in the front, all right? And it's so it's it's a it's a narrower range. So if I was just going to use it like recording a script, this is what I would use. The two-channel surround, and actually you change them just by moving this little dial, and then the light will light up in the new in the new direction. The two the two-channel surround is probably the best for when you want to record sound in the front and the back or and or all around um, like an interview situation especially if you're using it like a mic volley you're asking the question then you're moving the zoom to the person and they're answering and then you move back to you okay let's go back to the front panel I just pushed in the play button it says no file I want to let you know that we can tell automatically that our settings are correct here. The key record settings are listed right over there. It says 44.1 
16. That should be familiar to you. Um, so we, what we have here is sample rate and bit depth. Um, and those are the key recording features, and that's CD quality. That's what we use in this class. So that's what you should see on there. I'll push in again to make it wake up, and it'll say no file, but we can still see that that says 44. Oops, okay. I've just gone, I've just pushed the menu button. Um, so if I wanted to change, or let's say that that what didn't say 44, 1, 16, I could use the menu button to go to the menu, and then my little down toggle, to go to record, and then push that down, down toggle in, it becomes an enter key. I can go to record format. It tells me again, wave 44.1 16-bit. That's correct, that's what I want. If I, if I wanted to change it, I could push this in again. I could see many other uh, formats. But again, that's what I want, 44.1 16. And I'm just gonna push menu to return. Menu button makes you return back. I could go through other settings, but please don't change other settings unless you think something's really wrong. I can go back again, and I can go back again, and I'm back to the front screen. Um, in fact, I, if I push menu, I go to the menu, and I come back again. That's a good way to make it return to the backlight screen. All right, so I told you I'm already in standby mode. That means I can check my, my levels. I could have my headphones on. Whenever you're recording, you or your partner should have headphones on. And with headphones, I could listen to the sound, which is really arriving through the mic to see what it really sounds like. So remember, trust your ears with your headphones on. So assuming that I've checked my levels and I'm all set, I'm ready to do my first recording. I'm gonna wake up the backlight so you can see. And to record, the record button is this red button on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and push the record button. All right, and now you can see um, the clock is running, and, a, and this little red indicator has come on to say that recording is happening. Um, it's showing me my level still, and I can watch to see the length of my recording. I would do pre-roll. I'd push the record button, wait a couple of seconds, then speak. Then when I'm all done, wait a couple of seconds, and push record again. Now, if I want to um, go ahead and see what I've done, uh, listen to my recording, um, audition uh, my recording, I can just push the play button on the side, just push it directly straight in. All right, now you can see um, the clock is running. And, a, and this little red indicator has come on to say that recording is happening. Oops, sorry, I pushed the menu at my uh, right there. Level still. And I can watch to see the length of If I had more right, recordings, see, or I want to um, repeat a recording, I can toggle with my little you know, toggle button here. If I push play in again, it stops it. Okay. And I could continue and record it. I assume I didn't like that, I could record again. Um, I can delete recordings on here. But you'll probably do that through um through the computer. So I'm going to assume now that you have completed all your recordings and you're ready to remove the recordings uh, from the Zoom. So I'm going to turn the Zoom off with the but off hold button over here. If I hold it down, the Zoom says goodbye, and it turns off. And now I'm going to plug the Zoom in the, the uh, USB in. This will take just a second, excuse me. And when I do, the zoom had been off. When I plug the zoom in, it's using the USB power now to turn itself on. Now you, you, you will have read, hopefully, in the manual about the functions of using the USB connection to the computer with the Zoom. You will know that you actually could have the Zoom on first and then plug it in. The menus would be a little different then. I think it's best if you turn it off, then plug it in, let it use the computer's USB power. That way you really know what the that, that it's made its connection, right? Um, now, if you, I've also noticed that on some computers, some USB ports do not work very well with the zoom, and you have to try a different one. Uh, maybe try one instead of on the on the CPU box. Maybe you have to use one on the monitor or a different different type of USB port. So if you ever do this and it just nothing happens, it doesn't turn itself on. Try a different USB port. Okay. So um, it asked me a question. 
it says card reader or audio I F I think it says I'm gonna choose card reader by pushing in the little play toggle button I just push straight in on that because that's what I wanted to do I wanted to access the card reader and now it should have connected to my, co my computer as a drive I'll show you what it looks like on the screen okay so now I'm looking at my computer um, I have already plugged in the zoom it turned on I followed the prompt to use the uh, uh, the memory card on the zoom and then it should load as a drive here and I see it right here here it is as a drive I'm going to double click on it I get two choices four channel and stereo I'm assuming uh, this was we, we generally don't use four channel unless you've made that mic choice for some reason your recording is going to be in stereo then you're going to see probably a whole bunch of folders um, usually your recordings are in the, the most the highest number folder uh, but you may have to look through some of the folders to find them. Your recording should be dated, although you can't trust the date on the on these files because you sometimes the dates, the time settings on these zooms because they left they're left unused for quite a long time. The time settings may be off. As you see, this one thinks it's 2012, which I don't think that's right. Um, so anyway, do I want to check this recording? Well, I can. I could just um, double click on it and have it open in some default player um, or I could choose to open with something I'm going to actually use VLC media player which I like to use and it's going to open it up because it's just a sound file it's going to play it oops it's wanting to download a new thing sorry about that I'm going to cancel that um, I do have a recording going my volume was set very low but I can turn it up again um, it's showing me my level still Okay, so that is the recording that I made earlier. So I could, if I had a lot of them here, I could go through them and make sure I had the right ones. I would right click on it, copy it, and go save it to my drive, make sure I had all the files correctly. And if I wanted to right here, I could just delete that file. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I do. And the file's gone. Um, so I could close up my, my computer window. What else would I do? Well, I would treat this like a regular drive and safely eject it. Now I can remove the, the USB. And finally, let's look at the parts of the Zoom kit and give you a little other, other advice about using the equipment. The Zoom should be, uh, when it's in its kit, when you're not, whenever you're not using it, it should be in its padded case. So that's part of the kit. Here's a, a windscreen, a foam windscreen. If you're doing any recordings outdoors, that will really help to put the foam windscreen on. Otherwise, you get that puffing noise from, from wind. You'll have headphones in your kit, so make sure to use them. Or you bring your own earbud headphones. You may have uh, either one or the other of these, or both in your kit. Um, we have a mini tripod, which can be set so, so you can set it up, set your zoom up on a tabletop. We have a lollipop holder or if you only have the mini tripod you can use this like a lollipop handle for your zoom. Okay, um, Either one of these screw into the bottom of the zoom there it is screwed into the zoom and it's now a handle. Okay, I can use it like a mic and then use it for a mic volley to you and then back to me. Let me caution you that should you be using, uh, well, however you use the zoom, if you use this handle, if you use the, um, the mini tripod as a handle or on a table, or if you just set the zoom on the table, because it does have a little bit of rubberized feet, they can sit on a table. If you do any of those things, any movement around it, tapping on the table, um, any hand noise from holding on to this, you move your hand around on it, um, all that stuff will be transmitted to the very sensitive microphones. So you have to handle with care. Otherwise, I'd say um, uh, watch out for dust, uh, no moisture, don't take this any place that's going to get wet um, or dirty, and uh, you're responsible for it and all the parts, so make sure that you have them, and make sure you turn it off when you're done.